ministry that uh, God has really put upon my heart. My name is Pastor Mike Knoll, and uh, I head up Revival Prayer Ministries. And uh, the war room is something that just recently uh, has been stirring within me. Because I believe God wants to get the word out to his people regarding the incredible deception that is taking place today, not only in the world, friends, but also in the church. And it, uh, this is nothing surprising. This shouldn't take us off guard because Jesus warned us that in the last days there was going to be great massive deception. He said that many would be deceived. He said many false prophets would arise, many uh, false teachers, and would lead many astray. And so we want to be uh, sure that we are equipped by the Word of God so that we will not be deceived, so that we will not be led astray by the enemy who comes as an angel of light. He comes as uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. And, uh, you know, so we, we need to really be aware of what the Word of God teaches by the Holy Spirit, right? We need to have that inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the truth, friends, that sets us free. And so the war room is, is, is what God has put upon my heart to share with the viewers and uh, with his people so that they will be able to live victoriously in these very difficult, perilous, trying days in which we live. And so these are just going to be short clips, uh, five, six, seven minutes uh, in duration, uh, just uh, as the Spirit of God would put things upon my heart that I want to get out to you, uh, you know, as, as warnings, uh, perhaps in emergency situations, whatever it might be. And just recently, I was uh, praying and asking the Lord, God, how is it that we are to know when we're to go forward, you know, and to attack the enemy and to take the ground and to fight the good fight of faith, you know, to do sports, uh, spiritual warfare, how do we know when to engage in that kind of warfare and activity or when we are just simply to be still and let God fight the battle for us? Because there are times for both, friends. We know that. There's times when we're to pray through with, you know, as Jesus said, you know, the, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent, meaning us, this church, the militant church, we take it by force. But then there's also times when the Lord would say, be still and know that I am God. And so I was asking God, how do we know those things? And the Lord laid it very clearly on my heart that the Holy Spirit will tell us. He will show us. He will speak to our hearts, friends, in that still, small voice. And so just recently I was praying and, and God spoke to my heart and he said that right now we are in a season of rest concerning spiritual battle. It doesn't mean that the battle has stopped. It doesn't mean that at all. What it means is that God is putting his people into a position of rest. And I believe that's in preparation, friends, for the ultimate battle that is to come because we're living in the last days. We're living in the time when Jesus described it as the beginning of sorrows. He said it was going to be like a woman uh, in travail giving birth, that the pains would become more intense and more frequent as a woman is about ready to, to give birth. And so I felt that God was telling me to share with you, which I've already shared with my church, Freedom Life Church, that we are in a season of waiting upon God, that he's going to fight the battle for us, praise the Lord that we are to stand still, but that doesn't mean to be inactive. It doesn't mean to be lazy or idle. No, it means, friends, that we take a position in our spirit that God is going to work it out, that all we need to do is wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. And friends, we, we see that played out in the Old Testament so powerfully in Exodus chapter 14, when Pharaoh and his army were in hot pursuit against uh, Moses and Aaron and against Israel because uh, Pharaoh had set them free because of the incredible plagues that God had brought upon the land and finally, uh, you know, culminating with that last plague, that tenth plague of the uh, firstborn uh, being killed in all of Egypt. And of course, Pharaoh's son had died as well and that was the breaking point for Pharaoh and he let the people go. He finally let them go, and here's Israel in a time of great celebration and rejoicing, deliverance by the hand of Moses under the authority of God, and they're heading down, and here they come to the Red Sea, 
and, and they're stopped in their tracks. And all of a sudden they recognize that Pharaoh is right behind them, this great army. And there's nowhere for them to go. They are, they're shut up. They're, they're, they're caught. And they're about to be uh, captured again by Pharaoh. But look at what God tells Moses. This is powerful, friends. In Exodus chapter 44, verse 13, he says, Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still. Mm, mm, mm. Let that sink in. Stand still, Christian. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Hallelujah. That is a powerful, powerful picture of being still. It didn't mean that they weren't supposed to do anything. No, because God did open up the Red Sea. And God did command them to go forward. He said, move forward. Go into the promised land. Go into the land of milk and honey. Receive the blessing that I have given to you. And that's exactly what they did. But friends, they could not fight the battle. They didn't have, you know, the war, the warfare. They didn't have the weapons. They didn't have the, the soldiers. No. All they were was a very large band of people on their way out and heading who knows where. And so they couldn't fight Pharaoh and his army, but God was going to fight for them. Hallelujah. And God is saying the same thing to you today as well. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to fight in your own strength or your own uh, wisdom, friends. Or No, none of that. Your own strategy. No, God is saying to you today, stand still and see the salvation that God is going to bring to you. He's going to open up that Red Sea and God's going to say, the enemy that you've seen today, you're going to see him no more. Praise the Lord. So whatever enemy you're facing right now, you can be sure that God is going to deal with it once and for all. We also see the very same account uh, played out with King uh, Jehoshaphat, who was the king of Judah. And uh, he received the evil report, the very fearful, fearful report, that there was a massive, huge army coming against Judah. And friends, this army was more than what Judah could ever, ever come against. Judah did not have the manpower or the ability or anything else to fight this, army, this enemy. And so what did Judah do? He called for a fast, a time to pray and fast for everybody in Judah. They all gathered together and a prophet of God came to the king. Because the Bible says that the king was afraid. And so he called a fast. Hallelujah. That's the best thing to do, friends. When fear tries to come upon you, you get alone with God and fast and pray, hallelujah, and you're going to receive a supernatural supply of strength that is going to give you such boldness and such confidence and faith in God that God is going to fight your battle for you, hallelujah. And friends, that's exactly what happened. The prophet came uh, to Jehoshaphat, and this is what the prophet said to him. He promised, he said, King uh, Jehoshaphat, you shall not need to fight in this battle. And then he said, set yourself, set yourself, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What does that mean to set yourself? It means to position yourself uh, to be unmovable. Position yourself. Get locked in with God to be unmovable in what the enemy is trying to take you away from. And, and, and the enemy is trying to take you away from your faith and from your trust in God. That this enemy that has come against you, that God is simply saying, don't worry about it, child of God. Don't fret. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. That's not the answer. Don't try to take it into your own hands. That's not the answer. What is the answer? Set yourself. Be still. And that's exactly what King Jehoshaphat did. He took his army. He went out the next day to face the enemy. And all they did, friends, was worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. They sang praises unto God. They set worshipers and singers in the forefront of the army. And God came on the scene. And God fought the enemy for Jehoshaphat and for Judah. And God caused the enemy to turn against one another, and the enemy destroyed themselves, hallelujah, until they were all gone. Mm. And I believe God's going to do that for you as well right now, friends, as he prepares you for the ultimate battle that is to come. And so, friends, this little message is simply to stir you up, to encourage you, to put a faith in your heart, 
that all is well. God is saying all is well. So we can say, Lord, it is well with my soul. It might, it might not be well with your relationships, your marriage, your family, your children. It might not be well with your job. It might not be well with your neighbors, your friends. It might not be well with your finances. It might not be well with your health. But it is well with your soul. Praise the Lord. And so the last verse I want to leave with you today in this very first episode of War Room is simply this, friends. And this is a verse that is going to give you the very wisdom that you need to see your way to victory in whatever crisis you're facing right now. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. That's the promise of Almighty God. And God's word cannot fail. It cannot lie. God won't change his mind. He won't change his word. Not one bit. Friends, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Hallelujah. Do you notice the order in that verse? First of all, we must submit to God. God, I can't do this. I don't have the ability. I don't have the strength. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have the resources. God, I can't do this. God, I submit myself to you, Father. And then, friends, as you do that, as you, as you surrender your life, your heart, your circumstances, everything, your issues, as you surrender that to God, hallelujah, then what do you do? Then you resist. You, you refuse to give in to the lies and to the fear tactics of the enemy. Mm, that's all the devil's got, just fear. He's got no power against the Christian who's walking in the will of the Lord, who's walking in faith, who's trusting God, who's living a life of obedience, friends, and holiness. Do you think the devil can do anything against you when you are pleasing God in that way? No, absolutely not. He has no power but the power of fear and deception and intimidation. And those things are working very, very well in the body of Christ, sadly to say. But you... Submit to God, resist him. How do you resist him? The same way Jesus resisted the devil in the, in the garden, in the wilderness, uh, in, the, uh, in the time of temptation. What did Jesus do? He simply said, the de he said to the devil, it is written. That's how you resist the enemy, friends. You just tell the devil what the word of God declares, and that's going to build your faith, and that's going to put an end to it, and he will flee. Mm. He will flee. Not forever. <laughs> no, he'll, he'll come back with another battle, another temptation. But friends, that will secure you the victory right there and then. And you will be stronger. You will be more anointed. You will be more ready to face the next battle. Because that's exactly what this Christian life is. We go from battle to battle, don't we? From faith to faith, from strength to strength. The song says, from victory to victory, from battle to battle. Hallelujah. And so this is Pastor Mike Knoll. I just want to say thank you so much for uh, watching this uh, video clip of the War Room. And uh, we're going to continue to bring these uh, uh, encouraging words to you from time to time. So God bless you. This is Pastor Mike Knoll, and goodbye for now.